الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها وحمله وفصاله ثلاثون شهرا حتى إذا بلغ شده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال قال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين الله أكبر بسم الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أولئك الذين نتقبل عنهم أحسن ما عملوا ونتجاوز عن سيئاتهم في أصحاب الجنة وعد الصدق الذي كانوا يوعدون والذي قال لوالديه أف لكما أتعدانني أتعدانني أن أخرج وقد خلت القرون من قبلي وهما يستغيثان الله ويلك آمن إن وعد الله حق فيقول ما هذا إلا أساطير الأولين الله أكبر
بسم الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم سلامك سلامك
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. I really recommend not to leave because you're going to be missing something amazing tonight. الحمد لله رب العالمين for the past or in 2019 we started a program called أما بعد. أما بعد is a خطيب training program conducted by myself where we train our youth to become the future khatibs. And it was called Amma Ba'd. We know that, that this is the statement, the statement that the khatib says before uh, they start the khutbah. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, it was very successful. And then we had two years of COVID, so we stopped. And now, this year, we had our second Amma Ba'd competition. The first one was amazing. And the, the participants were all excellent. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, today, the brother who is hosting this one, the Amma Ba'd 2, is the winner of the Amma Ba'd 1, my beloved brother, Hamad Siddiqui. Uh, before I give him the mic, inshallah ta'ala, and we start the program, I just want to let you know there will be five young men competing. It was extremely hard because I only choose 20 people a year to train. So it was very hard to choose five from the 20. They were all amazing participants. But we have to choose <laughs> only five. So inshallah ta'ala, the whole thing will take 25, 30 minutes, and you will see your future generation, inshallah ta'ala, who is going to take over presenting bi'ithnillah ta'ala. So please remain seated. And at the end, you will be the judge. Brother Hamad will explain the whole process, inshallah. Hamad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, Jazakallah khair to everyone for coming and staying for the event. It's going to be very beneficial, inshallah. Before we start the program, I would like to just mention for myself, it wasn't planned at all, but the amount of work that is put in by Ustad Ba'ajur, the teachers for this program, is a huge deal. Uh, you know, behind the scenes, the amount of effort that Ustad Ba'ajur puts in, especially when I was his student in the Amma Ba'ad uh, class, like, you know, the amount of love that Ustad Ba'ajur has for each and every single one of his students and the amount of time and effort he puts behind you, brings you to his office, sits you down, you know, it sets up everything for you. Alhamdulillah to have a teacher like Ustad Ba'ajur and such a beautiful program. And secondly, I want to also put you in the shoes of the students who are going to be up here today. Because it's nerve-wracking, I'll tell you that. It's very nerve-wracking. It's very difficult to stand up in front of your community in front of so many people and to be performing such a thing and the amount of time and effort they have also put behind this so it's only fair that we give them our undivided attention and make dua for them and just some advice from my brothers who are performing today this is only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we, when you keep that in mind there's no one to fear here right it's like I don't want to mess up because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me and I'm here speaking because of for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so without any further ado, inshallah, I'm going to go ahead and invite our first speaker of the night up to the stage just to give a very short bio. Uh, I'd like to call up, uh, call up Yusuf Al-Sheikh Salama to the stage. He is 16 years old and uh, mashallah, he's a sophomore in high school. So we see that these people are, you know, they're, these young guys are in school and they're taking out their time to do these amazing events. So good luck to Yusuf. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. Yeah, the way I put the coffee. It's okay. I can find you here. <laughs> I have two barriers of the coffee in the hair. Is it comfortable? Alhamdulillah. It's good. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In alhamdulillah, in alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن, وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شيك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء يا أيها, ال... يا أيها الذين اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine this scenario. You've had a long day at work, or you've had a long day at school, and you want to come home to the symbolism of comfort, which is home. Inside the house, you have a roof over your head, it's air conditioned, and most importantly, the people inside that home love you very dearly. Now, I want you to imagine you pull up to, this, to your house, your home, your apartment, only to find that it has become a victim of a fire. And the people inside have also become victims. They've all perished, they've died in the fire. Just imagine that, imagine that scene. The Prophet wasallam said, the one who misses the Asr Salah, it is as if he lost his family and property. Now this hadith only mentions Asr. What about the other four Salahs? If this is the penalty for missing Asr, Losing your family and your property. What is the penalty for missing all five or two or three salahs? Wallahi, your own life would not be a sufficient penalty. What are, what are our excuses for missing our salah? If every other pillar were to fall, salah would be the only one to remain standing. If you're poor, you don't have to go to hajj and you don't have to give zakat. If you're sick, you don't have to pray Ramadan, you can make it up later. If you're poor, sick, no matter what the circumstance, you can always pray salah. Salah is the first thing that is accounted for. The Prophet ﷺ said, on the day of judgment, salah is the first thing that we are accounted for when we are resurrected. If it falls into place, then everything else will fall into place. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Everything else will not fall into place. Ahl al Salah is our time to talk to Allah. Is our one-on-one -on -one time with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْمُصَلِّي يُنَاجِ That means the prayer, the one who prays, he is conversating with his Lord. Now you're telling me you want to take up the opportunity to miss a chance to talk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Creator, the one who made us. You have the audacity to miss that? Be late, let alone miss it? قول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إن الله غفور رحيم. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now I can assume that because many of us are here on a Friday night praying عشاء, that we make, you know, إن شاء الله we pray our five daily صلوات. And someone might say. Well, I pray my five days salawat, but everything else isn't into place. I still sin from time to time, or I sin a lot. So what's this about everything else being into place? The problem can't be salah. Well, I'm sorry to tell you it is. How are you performing your salah? Are we just standing like idle statues, idly reciting verses of the Quran, not pondering upon their meaning? Or are we, just, are we actually engaging with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are taking the peace of salah for granted. I remember being a young boy and my father would tell me a story about this taxi driver in Egypt and how, he's wake, and how he was working paycheck to paycheck just to feed his family. Living under the constant stress of trying to feed a hungry child. And the only time he would find peace is during the Asha prayer when he would pray in the masjid. And he would say, he said to my father how he would wish that the Asha prayer was eight rakahs instead of four. Now I remember hearing this and thinking that's basically Tawih, this guy's crazy. But I was a young boy at the time, I didn't understand the peace that Salah gives us. Bilal the Prophet used to tell him, Ahna biha ya Bilal. O Bilal, make the call to Adhan and give us comfort by it. So if the call to Adhan, if the call to Adhan gives us this much comfort, what is the prayer? What is the, if the call to prayer gives us this comfort, what is the actual prayer giving us? What source are we getting from the actual prayer? Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'oon. 
اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا الصلاة. Well, don't actually start the prayer. Takbir. 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 Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Yusuf, mashallah, for that amazing talk. Beautiful reminder about salah. Let me tell you this first Arabic part, the khutbah haja, how difficult it is to memorize. You know, it's, it's easy when you see the, the khatib up there on the stage uh, giving it and when you look at it on paper. But when you're up there and you're reciting it, it's very difficult. Ask Ustad how many times I got in trouble for not memorizing one time. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, mashallah, amazing job. So let's go ahead and inshallah have our next speaker for the night come up here. Next, we'll have, we'll have uh, Ahmed Al Hamwi come up to the stage. Inshallah. Uh, Ahmed is 20 years old. He is a pre med student at UNT, mashallah. And he is uh, administrative assistant at Syrian Forum USA, mashallah. So let's give him our undivided attention. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها أث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. It's a very famous saying in Arabic. And it's famous because a lot of people said it. And a lot of people said it because, well, it's true. It's very true. Even the Prophet وسلم, once said, المرؤ على دين خليله. The person is on the deen of his best friend. How many people do you know in your life that completely changed around, flipped 180 degrees, hopefully to the better, because a friend motivated them to do so. Let me tell you a quick story. About four or five years ago, I used to live in Saudi Arabia, and I lived relatively close to one of my cousins, and we had a very close friendship. We, we tried to do everything together whenever we possibly can, except this one time, one, one year, he signed up for a summer camp in Mecca, where they memorized the whole Quran in about four to five months. And uh, he signed up and he went without me. Um, I mean, granted, we did have to pass a test to be allowed there, and I failed the test, but he was supposed to fail it with me, like, come on. <laughs> anyway, so he went, he did the whole thing, he came back, he told us all the details, and I was so jealous that next year, I went and I did it by myself too. At the same time, today, I'm a college student at the United States of America. Do you think I'm surrounded by sheikhs and hafadat Qur'an all the time? 
No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not even surrounded by Muslims all the time. Every day someone tries to convince their friend, hey bro, try this. Bro, take a hit of that. That's, that's not real drugs. That's Delta 17, Delta whatever. It's not real weed. Two weeks later, that friend doesn't even need convincing anymore. He starts convincing other people. Which is why one friend, one friend has the power to ruin your life. And one friend can hold your hand to Jannah, bi-idhnillah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد قال تعالى واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا This was a direct message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet alayhi salam telling him to remember to be patient and be with your companions who pray day and night seeking Allah's acceptance and do not, do not let your eyes distract you and obey those who follow nothing but their desires. So my brothers and sisters, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if he needed this reminder, then what do we need? I pray that Allah bless us all with friendships that only put us closer to him and higher in the ranks of Jannah bi-idhnillah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Thank you. Takbir, takbir, mashallah, amazing job eh, Ahmed, beautiful khutbah about friendship, choosing the right, right friendship, and inshallah, I will become friends with Ahmed now. He goes to the same university as me, I haven't met him once, so inshallah, we will see each other around, inshallah. So let's go ahead and have uh, our next uh, speaker for the night, inshallah. So let's go ahead and have Suleiman Sayyid, who is 17 years old, and he goes to Plano East Senior High School. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق دقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بلعة وكل بذعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد لا إله إلا الله it is a statement our deen is based upon. It is a statement that makes us Muslim. It is our core belief. If we think about it, the major difference between us and other religions is the belief of one God and only one God. 
Many times we get used to saying the statement of La ilaha illallah and we don't truly realize the deep meaning behind it. La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Meaning, no one else deserves to be worshipped other than Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times our intentions are corrupt and we fall into shirk. We add other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please and that ruins our entire ibadah. In this instance, we are going against the statement of La ilaha illallah, which is why we should take time to perfect our niyyah before doing any ibadah. In this instance, we are going, having firm belief in the statement of La ilaha illallah is first and foremost. In Surah Ikhlas, a surah we read so often, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in its first ayah, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah who is one. This ayah shows us the importance of Tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed defines our religion and, is the, and should be the basis of every action we do. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ونساء المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده صلى الله عليه وسلم إن حديث ناريد بي عثمان بن مالك رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came to him and said if anyone comes on the day of resurrection who has said La ilaha illallah sincerely with the intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make hellfire forbidden upon him. Allah will make hellfire forbidden upon him. Subhanallah. Isn't this our main goal? Isn't this what we strive for every day? Isn't avoiding hellfire and entering Jannah our main end goal? Insha'Allah, let's all work towards understanding and implementing the statement of La ilaha illallah in our daily lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to understand La ilaha illallah and understand the importance of it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us stay away from associating any partners with Him and falling into shirk. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our last deeds, our best deeds, and our last statement, La ilaha illallah. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته تكبير 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 MashaAllah, you can see that these speakers, they're not here just for the sake of speaking, but you can hear the compassion in their voices, MashaAllah. They're very compassionate about the topics that they're speaking about, alhamdulillah. So now, for our next speaker for the night, inshaAllah, we'll have Mustafa Hassani, who is 17 years old. He's a part-time teacher here at Epic in the Nadira program, MashaAllah. So let's give him our undivided attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruh, wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina, man yahdihi allahu falamudillalah, wa man yudlil falahadiyalah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Qala Allahu ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Kareem, 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Imagine I told you right now that you had less than one hour left to live What would you do? I'm sure that many of us would do dhikr and make astaghfar until our last moments or some of us would make a final phone call to our loved ones it is in these moments that we get a glimpse of the importance of time and it makes us reflect on how we often all take advantage of this gift Allah has given us. Understanding the concept of the value of time is something that is important for every Muslim to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا The day they will see it, it will seem to them as if they did not live in the world for one afternoon or the morning thereof. This ayah is emphasizing how quickly time passes, and that on the day of judgment, we will reflect back on our lives, and it will seem as though our whole lifetime went by in just one afternoon. Think about that. One afternoon. What will it take for us to realize the value that every moment has in our lifetime? There's a saying that goes, if you want to understand the value of a year, Ask a child who has failed his grade. If you want to understand the value of a month, ask the mother of a premature baby. And if you want to understand the value of a second, ask the survivor of an accident. Nowadays, so many of us are immersed into the shallow comforts of this world that we simply dismiss the fact that we could depart at any moment. An Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma qal, qal an Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun min al nasu sihhatu wal faraag. There are two blessings which, which many people lose. They are health and free time for doing good. How many of us can answer truthfully that we have used these two blessings for the, for the greater good and had, have done it the way Allah has prescribed it, prescribed it for us? Allah has not given us these blessings to waste. He gave them to us so that we can worship Him the way He has told us to worship Him and so that we can spread the message of Islam and give da'wah. It seems as though the only time we appreciate the value of a gift is when it is taken away from us. Let us make sure that we appreciate the gift of time before it is too late. قولي قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفر وانه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So how can we manage our time in the best way? One of the best things you can do is to build your schedule around prayer. As soon as the time for Salah comes, try your best to come to the masjid. But if you can't do that, at least make sure that you are praying punctually. Whenever you have free time, try to read Quran or do dhikr. If you have a relative or a friend you have gotten into an argument with and you haven't talked with them, try your best to make amends with them. There is no guarantee that any of us will wake up tomorrow and be able to do all those things we told ourselves we would do another time. In just a couple weeks, Ramadan will be upon us. So let us make sure that we make the best, uh, the best use of our time so that we can all maximize the rewards that we get in that blessed month. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحيم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم مخرجا وقيم الصلاة Takbir! 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 Wallahi, these guys are making it so difficult. I mean, at this point, I don't even know who to vote for. You know, I wish I could give them all the vote. MashaAllah, everyone's doing an amazing job. 
And for our last speaker of the night, we have Ashraf Kuzbari, who is 14 years old, mashallah. He goes to Auto Middle School, and he's a young entrepreneur. He is the founder of a company called Vibe Flames Eid Decoration. MashaAllah, that's amazing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inhu wa nasta'gfir. Wa na'udu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdi illah fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Amma ba'd, yaqul Allah fi kitabihi al-kareem. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور, وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters I have a Muslim friend and his name is Ihsan Ihsan used to be my neighbor but he had moved away a few years ago He was the best neighbor I had ever had kindest person Every other day he would bring a gift whether it be traditional dishes, fresh fruits anything you name he'd bring it when he moved, he told me the story of what had happened in his new neighborhood. It all began the day he moved in. This neighborhood, keep in mind, was full of non-Muslims, but the neighbor right beside him was extremely rude to him. This neighbor would do anything he could do to bother Ihsan. He would tell him things like, go back to your own country, and, tell, and make the dog bark at, as loudly as possible on purpose just to disturb Ihsan. Now many of us and many people would do many things other than what Ihsan would, what, other than Ihsan done. They would be angry, maybe file a complaint, maybe call the police, and this is rightfully so because of what the actions that this neighbor is doing to Ihsan. However, Ihsan did the complete opposite. He treated this neighbor with Ihsan. He would be so kind to this neighbor. He would give him gifts. He would always keep a smile on his face. And six months later, this neighbor was so confused as to why Ihsan would do this. He was eager to know why Ihsan treated him like this and why he kept his cool. So he knocked on Ihsan's door and asked him. Ihsan told him and he taught him the message of Islam. Allahu A'lam, we don't know what had happened if, if this person accepted Islam, but we know that Ihsan did his part. SubhanAllah, this instance made me take a look back about uh, what Islam taught us about treating our neighbors. Islam emphasizes kindness to the neighbors so immensely. In one Sahih Bukhari hadith, Aisha narrates that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jibreel continued to recommend me about treating the neighbors kindly and politely so much that I thought he would command me to put, put, to put my neighbors on my will. Subhanallah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Some of us have lived next to the same neighbor for 10, 20 years, and to this day, we don't even know their name. What does Islam have to say about this? We should, rather than doing this, we should interact with, be kind, and speak with our neighbors. We should be there and celebrate their happy moments with them and support them in their bad ones. This is because of the fact that the neighbor is such a crucial role because if there is a beautiful house, but the neighbors beside it are extremely rude and unwelcoming, then what good is the house? Same thing vice versa. If a house is not that nice, but the neighbors beside it are extremely kind and welcoming, then wouldn't this house feel so much better and the value increase? In the Tirmidhi Sahih Hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar narrates the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the companion who is best to Allah is the one that is best to his companion. And the, the neighbor that is the best to Allah is the neighbor that is, be, is the one that is the best to his companion, the best to his neighbor. I remind myself to be the best neighbor possible for the sake of Allah as their neighbors have this right over us. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yana'a anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi. يعظكم لعلكم تذكروه إن الله والملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تكبير 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 you know I wish I can be his neighbor one day inshallah and إحسان's neighbor as well inshallah mashallah all of these guys did such an amazing job and me and Ustad Ba'ajur know that the judging for these guys is going to be very difficult. That's why we didn't take the responsibility. We left that responsibility to you guys. So the way it's going to work... Okay, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Now you know what I went through. <laughs> now you saw five, I saw 20. <laughs> Subhanallah, Allahi, I was tearing. Allahi, I was so touched. You know, Allahu Akbar, Allahi. Let me just remind you of one thing. We are in America. What you just heard is happening in America. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect all our children. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Tayyib. Now, Brother Hamad is going to explain to you the process of voting, inshallah ta'ala. Do not be biased if you're related to one of the guys. <laughs> you know, just uh, vote, inshallah ta'ala, from the bottom of your heart sincerely. And uh, please go ahead and explain. And inshallah ta'ala, after that, we will call me and we'll give them the prizes, inshallah. So the way it's going to work, inshallah, is I'm going to have each one of them stand up here in the front and we'll re-mention their name. That way you can recognize the name and the, the face of the person. Yes, yes, inshallah. What we can do is on the screen up here, we're going to have a QR code. You can take out your phone and scan that and it will lead you straight to the link in which you can choose the person's name. It will say select the person's name. Right above it, it says first place. So whoever you want to choose for first place, choose them out of the list of the names. And then you'll be able to choose second, third, fourth, and fifth, and, and go on that way, inshallah. Oh, yeah, inshallah. So if I can have you guys you know, come up here and stand up here in the front. Just pass the mic one by one. Just mention your name. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullah. My name is Yusuf Sheikh Salam. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Ahmed Ahmed Al Hamwi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Suleiman Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mustafa Hassani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ashraf Kuzbari. If anyone is having any issue scanning, you can always come right here to the laptop and just scan that real quick. Is it? Is it? It's not letting you choose the second. Submit and then you go back again? Yes. Oh, okay. Explain that. Oh, let's close again. 
Oh, wait, wait one second. Goes back again. Have to do that again. Okay, I think the way it's going to. Yes, yes. Inshallah. Okay, go ahead. Mention the name. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Yusuf Al Sheikh Salama. My name is Ahmed Al Hamawi. My name is Suleiman Sayyid. My name is Mustafa Hassani. And my name is Ashraf Kuzbari. Assalamu alaikum. So uh, if you're confused with the uh, selecting the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, the first name that you're able to choose is first place. Then you will pr press that little plus button, and you're, get, you're able to choose the second name, that's second place. And then you can pl press it again for third, and then fourth, and then fifth. That way, inshallah. Anybody have any problem choosing? Raise your hand. We put, the, we put it in the order. They are in the order. They are. They are in the order. Ashraf, Mustafa, Yusuf, Suleiman, Ahmed. Yeah. Ahmed, 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 Everybody's finished, raise your hand. Okay, we'll give you another uh, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> one minute, inshallah. You can put the light on, uh, Brother Mateen. Yes, can we go ahead and turn the light on, inshallah? Second, uh, th first one. First one. Yep, no, no, first. Other person. The, oh, yep, exactly. Exactly, okay. Um, we don't have to show it yet. We could we see it, see it our, we, uh, on our own, yeah. Who needs more time? Raise your hand. Okay, so we've done this. Okay, inshallah. We're done. We're done. Okay, inshallah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, inshallah, uh, announce who the winners are. And uh, remember, inshallah, uh, so you're going to mention it. Yeah, okay. So, so we're, we're just give us two minutes, inshallah. We're going to go ahead and evaluate who the winner is by the votes, and then we'll get back to you, inshallah. And we'll hand out the prizes. Ustad Badru, inshallah, is going to hand out the prizes for them. We are ready to present, inshallah. So I'll hand the mic to Saad Ba'ajur. All right. <laughs> We're going to go with the fifth place and uh, so on till we get to the first. Fifth place, Sheikh Yusuf Takbir. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I will give you the prizes. Just stand here, inshallah. Inshallah. 
Fourth place. Sheikh Ashraf Kuzbari. Takbir. Allah. <laughs> Third place. Sheikh Sulaiman Sayyid. Takbir. Now stand up, Mustafa and Ahmed. <laughs> All right. This is very close, isn't it? The same? Is it tied? Is there any numbers? There's a way you can see the numbers. They are so close that I have to look again. <laughs> Doesn't show you? Okay. All right. So just go back to the pictures. Yeah, the previous. Okay. All right. So one of these guys is going to be giving a khutbah soon at Epic. <laughs> Not to be honest with you, Allah, all of them, they're going to be giving khutbah soon at Epic, inshallah ta'ala. And the winner of Amma Ba'd, part two, is Sheikh Ahmed Al Hamwi. Takbir. Mustafa came in second place. MashaAllah, may Allah bless them all and protect them all. I want them all to congratulate each other. MashaAllah. And now we give them the prizes. I just, I just want to say one quick word. Um, I don't think I'm better that, than any of my friends here. I just think that I've been lucky. I got a more relatable subject to talk about. It was easier to make something, but all of them, they all inspired me to, to do the best that I can because they were all so good. You had to prepare very hard to beat them. You know, I mean, it's impossible, but thank you. SubhanAllah, mashallah, wallah, this is so true. You know, every single one of them was amazing. And like I said uh, in the beginning, it's not easy to stand up there. I've been doing this for so long, and I, every time I stand up there, I still have some shaking. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, may Allah bless them all and protect them all. Jazakumullah khair. Please come and congratulate them. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.
إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا 